it's another math day here with teacher jenny join me for another topic this time we're going to talk about derivatives and the activity given to my students first one is f of x equal to three four this one is a derivative of a constant so our derivative for this is f prime of x this is our symbol you may use different symbol for that one that would simply mean the same thing as long as it denotes that that is the derivative so this one the derivative of a constant will always be equal to a zero g of x is equal to 5x minus 4 so the derivative of that one is equal to we have here a combination of the different rules we have the constant multiple so we just have to copy the constant there as a multiple of that term and then since we have here an x we will be using the power rule this is with one as a power so we just have to put down the one and multiply that one with a constant so we have five times one is still five and then we've got an x raised to one minus one so that will be equal to five times x to the power of zero and that will be equal to five times one and that's equal to five now the derivative of four it's a constant so that's a zero so we always have to tend to disregard the constant or cancel out the constant because that will give off a derivative which is equivalent to a zero We have the derivative of this we've got 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 the derivative of that one is we are going to assume assume this one that this is a combination of the product and the difference rule with the different rules as well the power rule and the constant multiple so we have to do the the derivative or the differentiation term by term so we'll start with 2x squared here so there is a multiple so we just have to copy the number two then we put down our our power which is two and then multiply that one with a constant copy the variable we have two as an exponent we subtract that one by one that is the rule on the power rule wherein you just have to uh, put down the exponent and then subtract the exponent with one and then we have here minus we have 3x that's a combination of a multiple a constant multiple and a power rule so we have constant multiple here copy and then x is with an exponent which is one so bring it down and multiply that one with a constant so three times one so let me just write it and then we've got x to the power of one minus one and then we have the constant here that gives off a derivative which is equivalent to a zero so we don't need to write anything this will be now two times two which is four x to the power of two minus one is one minus three times one is three x to the power of one minus one you've got there an x to the power of zero automatic that is equivalent to one so we have times one in here and then we simplify this is now 4x minus 3 that is our h prime x or the derivative of our h of x next one we have the j of x equal to 2 square root of x minus 3 cube root of x plus 4 4 root of x minus 32 so since we have radical uh, expressions here all we have to do is to rewrite that one into an exponential form so we have this as 2 to the power of take note once you have a radical expression to rewrite that one into fractional uh, exponent take note once once you have radical expression the radical expression is formed out from a fractional exponent so let's say we've got m here as the index m to the root of um, x to the power of n perhaps and then converting that one to fractional exponent that will be now equal to x to the power of we have our exponent form form or part 
we have here a fractional form wherein the exponent inside or the exponent of the radicand will be at the numerator part and then our denominator will be the index part. So we have x to the power of nm. So we will be transforming that one in that format so that we can get the derivative of that. So let's now uh, rewrite that into a fractional exponent. So we'll start with this one. Now remember we don't have any visible index here or the number here. This is going to be with a 2. That's a standard index whenever you don't see any number at all on the index part. Because the smallest index is 2. So we have to rewrite that as x to the power of a fractional exponent. Our x here has an exponent which is 1. So we have at the numerator part of the fractional exponent is a 1. And then our denominator there is the 2 which is the index. You may have it in a, in a parenthesis or not. Sorry on that. And then we have a minus 3. And then we have here another x. And then we have a fractional exponent for that. This is with 1 as an exponent, so we have 1 at the numerator part. Denominator is the index, so this one is the index. And then we have plus 4. Then we have another radical expression, so we've got x with a fractional exponent. This is 1 here, so 1 will be at the numerator. Index is 4, that will be the denominator part. And then minus 32. So we're now ready to get our... Um, derivative for that one. So the derivative of your g of x, that will be equal to 2. That's a constant multiple. We bring down our fractional exponent, so that's 1 half. And then we copy x. So we have here 1 half minus 1. We always have to subtract the exponent with 1. And then minus 3. And then we've got the exponent, bring it down, so we have times one-third. And then we have an x to the power of one-third minus one. And then we have plus four. Then we bring down the exponent times one-fourth. And then we've got an x. And then to the power of one-fourth minus one. So this minus 32 is nothing anymore because... The derivative of a constant is a zero. So let's now simplify that one. Now, if you're in trouble with um, subtracting fractions, especially if you've got fractional exponents, so you may do this one. So I'll be, you may omit this line if you want to once you try to do the derivative of that. So let me just simplify this. So two times one half, that is two over two. Or that's equal to 1. So we don't need to write anything. So we have x to the power of 1 half. Minus, so instead of 1 here, we will be rewriting 1 in a fractional form in which the denominator will be the same denominator as of this fraction. So we have there 2 over 2. 2 over 2, 2 divided by 2, that's equal to 1. So we don't change anything at all in there. So we have minus 3 times 1 third, that's 3 times 1, that's 3, over 3, that's equal to 1. So we have x to the power of 1 third, minus our 1 there, transforming that to fraction, that will be 3 over 3, because we have the denominator, which is 3 here, and then plus 4 times 1 fourth, that's 4 fourth, that's equal to 1. So we have x to the power of 1 fourth, minus 1, so instead of 1, that should be 4 over 4. Simplifying that one, this is now equal to x to the power of um, 1 half minus 2 over 2, that will be 1 minus 2, that's negative 1 over 2, minus x, 1 minus 3, that's negative 2, and then we copy the common denominator, 3, and then plus x, 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. Copy the common denominator, 4. And then since all of the uh, exponents there are negative, so we will be converting that one into positive. So this will now be 
equal to 1 over x to the power of positive 1 half. Now take note, once you have a negative exponent, you can get the reciprocal of that entire thing. And then your exponent there, because we're changing position, here we have our numerator part with an x to the power of negative 1 half. Once we change the position, our exponent will change its sign. So that's why we get the reciprocal of that one so that we can have a positive exponent. And then we have a minus and then 1 over x to the power 2 thirds and then plus 1 over x to the power of positive 3 fourths. Now, again, we, in our final answer, it's a no-no for us to have a negative exponent and a fractional exponent. So we convert this one into a radical, ex, radical expression. So we have 1 over x to the power 1 half. Take note of this format here. We now go for a radical form. So we have this 2 here as a denominator. So that means we have a square root for that and an x. The power of that one is 1, so we don't need to copy that. And then minus 1 over uh, the cube root, because we've got 3 as a denominator here, so cube root of x. Our power here is 2, because our numerator is 2, so the exponent of x here is 2. And then plus 1 over, we've got the fourth root this time, because our denominator is 4 of x to the power of 3 because our numerator is 3. Now this time this is a no-no again because we've got a radical expression at the bottom part so we have to multiply each of the terms here or rationalize each of the term. So what we are going to do is for the first term we are going to multiply this with whatever expression that will make our um, radical symbol canceled out there. So this one, since we've got square root of x, so we can simply multiply the, this one with a square root of x over a square root of x. Because once we try to multiply square root of x and square root of x, this will give off a square root of x squared, and that will be canceling our uh, square root symbol there. So on the second term as well, we are going to multiply this with cube root of x over cube root of x because we have squared already here on x so adding that one with one on the exponent of your x here that makes it x cubed so we'll be literally canceling the cube root in there later on and then this one here we've got fourth root of since we have cube here so we only have an x to the power of one here so fourth root and then we have an x to the power of 1. Because this is already cube, and then we've got 4 to the root here, as the, or 4 as the index. So we only need 1 of that one. So simplifying this one further, let me just have that one here. So simplifying that one, this will be now square root of x over x. And then minus cube root of x over an x and then plus the fourth root of x over x. You may try to uh, simplify that one farther because we have the same denominator. So that will become now. So we just collect all the numerators there. So cube square root of x minus the cube root of x plus the fourth root of x. So I think this one is the final answer for that one. This one is our j prime of x, or that is simply our derivative of the function j of x. So I'll be uh, posting on the second part of this one, so please do wait for that one, and again, Good luck on every challenges that you are facing. Everything will pass through. It's a matter of time.